concept 9.1, Catabolic Energy Yield. For this concept, we will do a broad overview of metabolic energy exchange within an ecosystem. We will talk about how ATP is produced. We will also talk about oxidation reduction reactions, which, which are also known as redox reactions. Let's take a look at the overall picture of energy exchange. Sort of a forest view before we are distracted by all the individual trees view, so to speak. Energy enters the ecosystem in the form of light energy from the sun. The photosynthetic enzymes and chloroplasts use that energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into organic molecules. Oxygen is released as a byproduct of the process. The organic molecules produced by the chloroplasts, which are simple sugars, are used by the mitochondria of cells to produce ATP. The mitochondria can be either in the plant cell with the chloroplast or in the cell of something that has eaten the plant. Yes, plants have mitochondria. The sun doesn't shine all of the time, so they have to be able to use the sugars they made during the day. Mitochondria produce ATP through cellular respiration with carbon dioxide and water as byproducts. The carbon dioxide and water are converted into organic molecules and oxygen by the chloroplasts. And around and around we go. Remember that for each exchange of energy, some energy is lost as unusable heat. After that overview, let's start looking at some trees. One of the ways that ATP can be made is by a process called substrate level phosphorylation. That's where an enzyme moves a phosphate group from a molecule, its substrate, onto ADP. We'll be talking about that in glycolysis in the citric acid cycle. Another way is called oxidative phosphorylation, and we will be talking about that during the section on ETCs and chemiosmosis. In either case, energy goes with the phosphate group. The more phosphate groups a molecule has, the more energy it has. Hence, adenosine triphosphate has more energy than adenosine diphosphate. Energy can be passed from molecule to molecule through the movement of electrons. Just like phosphate groups, electrons carry energy. Actually, electrons are often moved from, from molecule to molecule in the form of hydrogen. The proton comes along for the ride. Moving either hydrogens or electrons from one molecule to another is called oxidation reactions or redox reactions. When a molecule loses a hydrogen, it is said to be oxidized and it has less energy. When it gains a hydrogen, it is said to be reduced and has more energy. Follow the hydrogen to see which one has more energy. Another way to remember this is with the phrase Leo goes Ger. Lose an electron, oxidation. Gain an electron, reduction. Some students prefer oil rig. Oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. Either way, make sure you remember that reduced molecules, those that have gained an electron or a hydrogen, are more energetic. Here is an example of a redox reaction. When glucose is broken down into CO2 through aerobic respiration, it becomes oxidized. It loses hydrogens. CO2 has less energy than glucose. Oxygen, on the other hand, becomes reduced in the process. It gains hydrogens to become water. Water has more energy than oxygen. There are molecules that move hydrogens around, just like ATP moves phosphate groups around. I mean, we can't let those valuable hydrogens run around loose in the cell, can we? The main molecule that moves hydrogens around is nicotinamide, which is abbreviated NAD. It is a dinucleotide, or two nucleotides put together. When it is in the oxidized or less energetic state, it is called NAD+. 
When it is in the reduced or more energetic state, it is called NADH.